If you've ever suffered from an upper respiratory infection, sinus infection, or UTI, it can be hell and it can become extremely serious. But what happens when the antibiotic your doctor prescribed solves one problem while causing another? There's one particular antibiotic that's commonly prescribed for these conditions and has been directly linked to causing severe peripheral neuropathy. It's considered to be the most dangerous antibiotic for the nervous system. Today, I'll reveal the class of antibiotic that are considered to be the deadliest antibiotics on the market. Don't go anywhere, you definitely don't want to miss this. Explorer. This is Dr. Coppola, the Nerve Doctor. I'm here to help you achieve new levels of health you've never dreamed possible. Dr. Montero and I make it our mission to stay up to date with the most current research so we can arm you with the information you need to recover from neuropathy. Be sure to click on the subscribe button for up to date and accurate information on how to overcome peripheral neuropathy. And don't forget to click on the bell so you get notified as soon as we publish new content. Now, Let's get started. Antibiotics are powerful drugs that can help our bodies combat bacterial infections. When used appropriately, they can quickly and effectively eliminate infections that may become serious and allow us to feel better in a matter of days. We often take antibiotics prescribed by our doctors without questioning the risks associated with that medication because after all, your doctor wouldn't prescribe it if it wasn't absolutely necessary, right? Well, it's no secret, however, that antibiotics are the most overprescribed and misused drugs, which has led to a growing problem with antibiotic resistant bacteria. In fact, the Center for Disease Control reports that at least 28% of all antibiotics prescribed each year are unnecessary. In today's video, we'll cover three parts. In part one, we'll reveal the deadliest antibiotic on the market. In part two, we'll talk about what makes this antibiotic so dangerous. And in part three, we'll talk about how to avoid this antibiotic. Part one, the deadliest antibiotic on the market. There's one antibiotic that's so destructive to the peripheral nerves and other systems of the body that the FDA has issued severe warnings urging doctors only to use them in life-threatening situations. Are you ready for it? It's a class of drugs known as fluoroquinolones. There are several brand name and, and generic fluoroquinolones that are on the market, including Levaquin, also known as Levofloxacin, Cipro or Ciprofloxacin, Avalox or Moxifloxacin, Baxdella or Delafloxacin, Floxin or Ofloxacin. The generic name for these antibiotics will always end in floxacin. Have any of you been on any of these antibiotics? Leave me a comment down below and let me know. I'm really curious. Before we get into how these antibiotics do severe damage to the peripheral nerves, let's first talk about what they're prescribed for. Fluoroquinolones are commonly prescribed for non-life-threatening infections like sinusitis or sinus infection, urinary tract infections, prostatitis, bronchitis, or pneumonia. It's important to note that certain pneumonias may be life-threatening for those with respiratory impairments or the elderly, but these drugs are prescribed for even non-life-threatening pneumonias. Fluoroquinolones can also be prescribed for life-threatening infections such as septicemia or blood poisoning, bone infections, intra-abdominal infections like gastroenteritis, typhoid fever, and anthrax. So here's what's curious. The FDA has issued warnings to the doctor stating, the US Food and Drug Administration is advising that the serious side effects associated with fluoroquinolone antibacterial drugs generally outweigh the benefits for patients with acute sinusitis, acute bronchitis, and uncomplicated urinary tract infections who have other treatment op options. 
So in a nutshell, the FDA is urging doctors not to prescribe these antibiotics for these conditions. Now, that's not the only warning that the FDA has issued. The FDA has issued a total of four black box warnings, also known as boxed warnings, since 2004 up to 2018. Now, a black box warning is the highest safety-related warning that medications can have assigned by the FDA. These warnings are intended to highlight the major risk of the drug right on the box so that the consumer can see it for themselves. However, despite the FDA urging the doctors and the numerous boxed warnings, there are over 21 million prescriptions filled each year for fluoroquinolones. The, the majority of the scripts were prescribed for, uh, by doctors for things like sinus infections, UTIs, bronchitis, ear, ear infections, and prostatitis. So what this means is that doctors are not listening to the FDA warnings or are downright just ignoring them. All right, so let's move on to part number two, which is let's look at what makes fluoroquinolones so dangerous. Fluoroquinolones have molecules of fluoride as a central part of the drug. So fluoride is known as a neurotoxins that can penetrate very sensitive tissues, including peripheral nerves and your brain. The ability to cross blood-brain barrier is what makes fluoride such a potent neurotoxin. Fluoride also disrupts collagen synthesis and can damage your immune system by depleting energy reserves and in inhibiting antibody formation in your blood. Research has shown that fluoride molecules damage nerves in the following way. First, it causes significant damage to nerve cell membranes. It disrupts mitochondrial function or energy production within the nerve cell. It depletes magnesium, leading to disruption of cellular enzyme function. And it causes oxidative injury and cell death of the nerves. Now, a question you might be thinking is, well, what percentage of people who take fluoroquinolones actually suffer from all the, this damage? And that's a fair question. There have been numerous studies which show that these antibiotics cause tremendous amount of peripheral nerve damage. But Dr. Daniel Morales from the U University of Dundee School of, of Medicine in Scotland took the research one step further. He reviewed the cases of 1.3 million adults with no diagnosis or symptoms of peripheral neuropathy who had taken one or more prescriptions of fluoroquinolone antibiotics. And here's what he found, and I quote, we observed that treatment with fluoroquinolones could increase the risk of peripheral neuropathy up to 50%, and the risk may last for up to six months following treatment. This means that you might not notice peripheral neuropathy symptoms for six months after taking the antibiotic. But wait, there's still more. We now know that peripheral nerves aren't the only areas of damage affected by these drugs. The FDA uh, and numerous research studies have revealed that these antibiotics can cause disabling and poten potentially permanent adverse effects to tendons, muscles, and joints, along with, the, along with tendon ruptures. In fact, I treated a 35-year-old firefighter who suffered with a tendon rupture after taking a full course of Leviquin for a sinus infection, and then developed peripheral neuropathy as well. Fluoroquinolones have also been linked to causing hypoglycemic comas, hallucinations, convulsions, anxiety, and depression. Lastly, the most horrific adverse reaction is that these drugs can cause aortic dissection, which is a tear to the largest artery in the body that can result in death within minutes. Fluoroquinolones are especially dangerous for children under the age of 18, adults over 60, pregnant or nursing women, and people with liver disease, diabetics, or those taking corticosteroids, or people uh, who are taking NSAIDs. And they can be especially harmful when prescribed for animals. Yes, these antibiotics are commonly given to animals in the form of moxifloxacin or ofloxacin. All right, moving on to part three, probably the most important part. So how do you avoid taking these dangerous antibiotics? First, Always ask your doctor which antibiotic he or she is prescribing for you. If you're not familiar with the name, ask him if it's part of the fluoroquinolone family like Leviquin or Cipro. If it is, decline the medication and ask for a different class of antibiotic. 
Now, I know some of you may feel very uncomfortable about confronting your doctor about what they should prescribe. If you shy away from this type of communication, simply tell your doctor you're allergic to fluoroquinolones and no further questions will be asked. You must protect yourself at all costs because most doctors aren't aware of the dangers associated with fluoroquinolones despite the FDA warnings and hundreds of published research articles in the U.S. alone. Secondly, protect yourself by being informed. Don't wait for your doctor to educate you. Most doctors aren't aware of half the side effects of any given drug they prescribe, and there are several reasons for this. One is because of diminished reimbursements for managed health care is causing doctors to spend far less time with their patients. Second reason is that doctors receive a lot of information about the benefits of drugs, but not so much on the dangers of the drug. And the third reason is denial about the negative effects that these drugs can have. So don't rely on your doctor. This is your health, your body, and the consequences can have a dire impact on your life. Download an app on your phone like drugs.com or Pocket Pharmacist. With these apps, all you need to do is type in the name of the drug and it will list the generic form, it'll tell you what the drug is used for, and a list of all the side effects associated with it. Lastly, ask yourself, do I really need this antibiotic? Here's what I mean. For conditions like sinusitis, prostatitis, UTIs, and even acute bronchitis, and pneumonia, there are many effective natural alternatives that you can take. It's important to align yourself with, the, with a doctor who's well-trained in functional medicine or well-trained as a naturopath. Well, that's it for now, Health Explorer. Remember, our goal is to help you overcome your peripheral neuropathy and reclaim your life back, preferably without harmful drugs. So here's a quick question for you. Did you know antibiotics could cause peripheral neuropathy? Leave us a comment below. Let us know what you, your experience has been. As always, thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel. And remember, we release new videos every week, so make sure you click on the bell to get notified. If you're enjoying these videos, the best way you can support us is by liking this video and sharing it with others. This helps neuropathy sufferers know there's hope and they're not alone. Until next time, my friends, I look forward to seeing you on the road to great nerve health. And in part three, we'll talk about how to avoid this antibiotic. Mm -hmm. Alrighty. We'll make him the new director.